What's up guys, I'm Scott and today I'm going to show you my first ever commission through Fiverr. So after the recent success of some of my paints on things like Instagram and on Reddit, I decided to try and open Fiverr. I was asked by a few people if I was doing commissions. It's not something that I've ever sort of considered. I just kind of paint for the fun of it. But then realizing that it's something I could do and kind of follow my dream and, you know, eventually hopefully turning this into something more of a career rather than just of a hobby, I decided to take the plunge and open a Fiverr account and uh, see if I could get some commissions. Luckily, my Fiverr account was only open for less than like an hour, maybe two hours at most. And someone contacted me about a Primaris that they'd like to be painted. The faction colours was Knights of Griffon. It's not something I've ever heard of. So I had to do a little bit of research on that. But I'm going to show you the process of what we did. Let's get to it. So to start with, I had to break the model down into three main components. Now, Knights of Griffon isn't something I've really worked with before. It's quite new for me. So I had to do a little bit of image searching and find out what they are and get a bit of idea about the color scheme so the first thing that came to mind as soon as i did this was that the power armor is in like a yellowy orange sort of color and the backpack is in black and for this commission i was asked to make sure that there was a head on this rather than it being a helmet so we did that so using some old wine bottle corks and some paper clips that were bent into a straight shape i put the backpack on one and the head onto another as well and then obviously just grabbed the model to be used with a g-dub sort of handle and um, gave these a bit of a base coat in black because no matter what i wanted to make sure they were primed anyway to make sure that this, the colors stick plus as well i want to do a zenithal highlight on the main model just so i could kind of get a bit of an idea about where the land is going to lay in terms of highlighting so then when i come to do the orange i can focus more of the yellow style of highlights towards the light source and then the darker orangey sort of dark bits behind the legs under the armor and uh, would be naturally a bit more darker so using a zenithal highlight kind of gives me that outlook straight away so normally when i zenithal highlight i just use some white paint from vallejo or from g-dub but after watching a few stuff from miniac and squidmar i realized that ink's probably the best way to get a really nice and smooth zenithal highlight turns out white paint isn't too good through an airbrush so i picked up uh, from Amazon, like a fiver, I think it was, with some white ink. I have to be honest, this stuff's amazing. It gives such a nice transition between the dark and the light without it being speckly. There was no speckling on this whatsoever. It was just really nice and smooth. Whereas with the white, you do get quite a lot of speckling, a lot of spider webbing. This just came out really smooth. The needle didn't get gunked up. It, it just looked a lot better. So what I'm trying to do here is kind of think about where the light source is coming from now, from my perspective of, of painting this and where I would naturally see it. The sun is obviously zenith is going to be up above. So I'm kind of getting it on a bit of like a, a 45 degree angle looking down towards it and kind of catching all the raised parts of the, the like shoulder pads, the knee pads um, and the top of the sort of armor. So moving on to the main color, which is obviously going to be orange, I kind of wanted to keep the zenithal highlight, so I didn't want to do this too thick. I've kind of shown you an image on the screen now of what the Knights of Grafone are supposed to look like, and this is the sort of direction that I was asked to do. So I picked up an orange from Vallejo. It's just, I think it's just called orange, to be quite honest with you, uh, from the model air range, and I gave it a bit of a spray. And the idea here was because I've got basically a white undercoat on the zenith, on the, on the highlighted area, that's going to make it more orange and more yellow compared to the darker areas which were still mainly black which would give it a natural shade this had a really good effect because it actually made it look a bit more dusty and dirty towards the underside of stuff so like the underside of the feet and the back of the legs going up to the back of the armor looked a bit more grubby and a little bit more in shadow rather than it looking quite pristine and new so this is one single coat was absolutely perfect for the effect that i wanted to give it more of a highlight on the top areas, I mixed some flash gitch yellow with the orange that I had to kind of get more of a yellowy orange. But then I focus this mainly just on the highlighted areas. So top of the shoulder pads, top of the armor, top of the knee plates and around the hands and uh, knuckle areas. And all I did was this was a bit more of a, a targeted spray. So kind of spraying exactly on the areas that I wanted rather than it being an overall spray and giving it more of a sort of transition, more of a shade effect just by highlighting these areas. 
As this is supposed to be like a quick paint, I didn't want to spend too much time messing about changing between paints and colours. So while I still had my airbrush out, I decided to start, sort out the head. So using um, Ultharan Grey for this one, I found this is really useful. I did this on my Pox Walker tutorial video. I found this really, really useful for putting down Rikon Flesh Shade over the top of it because it gives a really, really cool and really detailed sort of outline of flesh or faces with minimal effort and it means that you can then highlight with things like Bugman's Glow, um, Rack and Flesh Shade, Rack Our Flesh over the top of it afterwards rather than it being building up from scratch it kind of outlines all the layers of where your highlights are naturally going to be so you can focus on them and it makes it a little bit easier but it also gives a natural flesh tone really really quickly. With the airbrush out of the way I started painting some of the details. I was really happy with how the armour looked and it was time to start focusing on some of the, the closer detail. So yeah, I did drill out the barrel of the bolter. Anyone who doesn't is a heathen and a heretic and should be done by the Inquisition. But what I did is I used some Otharan Grey. Again, it's one of my favorite colors, especially when using any sort of shades. And I use this to go around all the metal areas and every area that I want to be non-metallic metal. I didn't want to use any metallics on this paint. So even though it's a quick paint, I still wanted to make it look quite nice, quite professional. After all, it is a tester and this determines whether the job went well or not and I like to put a bit of pride in my work so I made sure that we we're going to do some non-metallic metals and only use metals as a highlight rather than a base coat I didn't want to go down the lead belcher and null oil route so Ultharan and grey over all these areas just to kind of give it the base and then we're going to use some contrast afterwards I then painted the bolt rifle casing with a bad and black this took, I think, two coats just because of the mix of orange and Ultharan Grey that was kind of splattered around it. So I was just really careful here not to catch any of the power armor because I had a natural gradient on it and putting that back in would have been a bit more work. Keeping with the bad and black, I then detailed in the symbol on the shoulder pad. This is one of the last bits that's going to kind of stand out against the orange, the black against the orange. I think it looks really quite, quite cool. So I was quite determined to make sure that this was done as sharp as possible the sharpest sort of edges on it to kind of highlight the insignia that was on there so to make the chest aquila look a little bit different to the standard about and black i decided to use contrast paint the idea here is it's going to make the recesses darker and then allow me to highlight the edges with something a little bit more um, bright and kind of make it a bit more of an emphasis you probably notice that the knife is also been coated in the Black Templar contrast. The difference between the non-metallic metal of the knife and the black of the Aquila is going to be all down to the way that I highlight this. So because I'm going to be highlighting using metallic colours on the metal, it's going to make it look more of a metal. Whereas the chest piece, the Aquila, is going to be highlighted using more dark tones and more flat colours, which is going to make it look more just like a black Aquila. Sticking with contrast, I then started to take my focus onto the leather satchel on the back and the gun holster and some other bits and pieces like the knife holder as well. This was done with contrast wild wood. It's a nice little brown colour. I find it quite nice. Snake bite leather's decent, but I didn't want to put it against this because I think snake bite's quite an orangey colour anyway. Putting it against the armour is just going to kind of look like it's melded into one. So I wanted to go for a bit more of a darker colour. The idea with this, the reason that I use the contrast on this rather than doing any sort of shading on it is, again, don't forget this is a speed paint. I want to kind of get this done as fast as I could do within the time limit and with a quoted sort of monetary cost against it as well. But I want to be accurate and I wanted to make it look good. So using contrast on here is going to give it a nice bit of depth without leaving it a flat colour. It's going to look like it's had a bit of time put into it. Sticking with the old sort of classic colours, I use Zandri Dust and Pink Horror to base coat the purity seals ready for the first bit of wash on there and then eventually the top coat. Starting with Eshin Grey and then final edge highlight of Dawnstone, I went around the Aquila and the bottle gun casing. The reason that I use these two colours is because it kind of makes the black more highlighted rather than detracting from it and I find sometimes you can make the black items look quite grey by using too much. I find these two colours are perfect for this. I use these two colours as well to edge highlight around the backpack with that being pure black just to kind of give it a little bit of colour and then also use a little bit of a wet blend as well just on the top to give it a little bit more of a highlight. To highlight my metal areas more and again to kind of differentiate between the difference between the Aquila for instance and then the knife and the, the bolter I use some Stormhose Silver. I use it straight from the pot and you probably see I'm kind of like using it 
very very sparingly using it against the end of my finger to get the, the the tip of the brush as tight as i could and all i'm doing here is kind of sketching in where the blade edge would be to kind of make it highlight this is gonna because the rest of the blade isn't shiny it's gonna make your eye kind of draw towards that and realize that's kind of a sharp edge and then doing that on the sharpest edges of say the bolt gun as well and uh, the rest of the knife the back of the backpack as well where the vents are all kind of gives it that sort of uh, sharp metal feel I also found one of the best ways to give a bit of a metal feel across the whole uh, part that you're painting such as the bolter instead of necessarily using the belch and then using null null over the top of it if you just use quite a dry version of this Stormo silver in this case on a brush with barely any, any on it and then kind of almost like dry brush it just flick it across but do it in the direction of where you would imagine the light going this is going to create kind of like streaks and like light, light shafts and then give it a metallic feel without it being fully metallic as a finishing touch the purity seal for the parchment on there to give it more of a weathered and aged looking effect just use some agrax earth shade little thin layer of it now normally you would just pull this on and let it go into the recesses but i'm going to direct exactly where i want it so kind of looking again how the light would hit this going for the recess areas that's where i'm going to try and deliberately pull this to make it have more of a shade effect where i want it rather than on the raised areas as a final step for the power armor i wanted to manually paint some edge highlighting and some uh, blending on there to give it more of a pop instead of just relying purely on the airbrush so i mixed some troll slate orange with some yellow and kind of got a nice burn orange color where it was a little bit lighter than the color that was on the power armor as a highlight as standard and then picking out the areas that had already been highlighted using the xenophil airbrush technique I went around the shoulder pads and the top of the chest plate armour and the knee pads and the knuckles and then just picked out the highest points of them and gave them a little bit of a wet blend and then finally went with almost a pure yellow just kind of dotting in the areas where the light would catch the highest. As a final step to finish off the purity seal I went back with some more Xandri dust and a little bit of a highlight with a shabti bone and went over the flat areas and the raised areas which would naturally catch the light. I then went round the actual purity seal itself, the wax, with some Screamer Pink and um, used some Drooky Violet as well to kind of shade it down a little bit. And then using a really tiny brush, I just put a little bit of detail on there to make it look like it had some writing or some runes or something on there. With the armour and backpack done, it was time to tackle the face. So I decided to use the contrast brown that I'd used on the satchels on the back as hair. And what I found here, which was really quite uh, interesting is because it's contrasting, because it's designed to kind of uh, give that natural shading, kind of like a wash would do, but with higher pigmentation, I just kind of manipulated it and I kind of stippled it as, I, as and when I needed it and where I want, wanted it. And it gave a natural kind of hair color, um, more of like a 3D effect, even though it was on a flat surface, which was quite impressive. With the hair done, I finally got to make a start on the skin. And as I say, this is literally a shabti bone with some Rikon flesh shade just put over the top of it. You don't want to go too heavy on it because you don't want it to pull and you don't want it to look wet. You want it to look dry, you want it to look more like flesh. So what I did is I used quite a thin layer and again using the brush to manipulate where the shadow and where the shading is going to be and just making sure I caught all the areas such as under the nose, around the mouth, um, in the ears and the eyes as well around the eyes and then went over again with a second coat once that had dried. Unfortunately, during the process of painting the face, my camera lost focus, so I lost all the footage because I didn't check it because I'm dumb. But anyway, here is the sort of finished result of it. Really, really simple, really easy. I think the face took me about 15 minutes maximum to do from start to finish. With all the parts finally finished, it was time to assemble the model, but I wanted to make sure that this had a decent base. The request that I was given was to give it more of like a, a Badlands Cracked Earth sort of feel. So that's kind of what we went with, and that's what I decided to make for the model. Because these have been painted on effectively sprues, it's really, really simple for me to take these off and just stick them directly straight onto the model after they've been done. But ultimately, this is going to mean it's a flatter paint using the airbrush originally. I'm not going to have any paint marks or any paint strokes during the painting process. Having unstuck the model from the base, bearing in mind it was only done with blue tack, and then painting the base in dry hard bark, which is quite a nice dark brown colour, I went round with some agrellin earth. 
Now this stuff is brilliant because it cracks and it makes it look like cracked earth. If you want to speed up the process, you can do this at home simply by putting it over like a radiator or anything like that. Just be wary not to blow anything on it because you don't want it to affect the way that it dries, you just want it to dry faster. With the Agrillon Earth Dry, this is the sort of effect that you're going to get, which I was talking about, and this is why I love this so much. It gives such a natural, sort of flaky earth, dry earth texture. I'm going to use some Ashabti Bone to dry brush and give it a little bit more colour because it's quite flat, and then afterwards we're going to give it an even higher colour using some Celestial Grey. Now you can use whichever colour you want depending on which earth type you're going to try and do. I've done this before using um, blue paints and using some Gulliman's Blue sort of technical paint which gave a really nice ice effect on the bleach color rider that i did a while ago but ultimately what i'm looking for here for is a cracked earth effect the color is neither here nor there you can paint it whichever color you prefer as a final step for this model i use some more agrax earth shade on the base just to kind of get some more shadows and a bit more depth along all the cracks and then use some vallejo matte varnish to seal it all in I don't want all that hard work and all that nice flakiness and the base to kind of go to waste and using the matte varnish is going to seal it in and protect it from chipping away or from flaking away and it should stay there for years. This was kind of the end of the model for me and the last piece that I needed all I needed to do was assemble it. And after all that hard work and effort, this is the final result. So as you can see, it didn't take me too long to paint this and I'm actually really proud and pleased of how this came out. This is my first commission that I've done for somebody else. So normally you get the kind of pressure when you're painting for yourself and think, well, it's only me who's going to see it or maybe my friends. So there's no sort of consequence if you do it wrong or if you mess up. Whereas doing something like a commission, it needs to be to a certain standard because that's what you've agreed. So I did find this was quite uh, a lot more pressure for me, but ultimately I really enjoyed it and I love the experience and I can't wait. I've already got more commission orders coming through and it's something that I'm excited about to paint different type of models that I wouldn't normally in my normal day-to-day -day armies. I'm excited to see what's going to come my way. I'm excited to see what else can do for you guys content-wise. If you enjoyed today's video and you like the content, you can help out the channel by hitting the thumbs up button and the down there. If you haven't already, you can subscribe and share the video around with your friends. We'll catch you next week, guys. See you in a bit.